Alright, Shrewd was designed to basically kind of make my life a little easier. I had basically created it uh, to help me keep up with things, um, monthly reminders, weekly reminders, uh, things that tend to slip your mind quite often. Uh, <clears throat> I figured the medium that was best for me was to receive these reminders via email because um, I have an iPhone, as you can see, which has uh, calendars and appointment reminders on it. I never kept up with that. I always kept up with my email. So instead of trying to make myself bend to the software, I made the software bend to me <coughs> or accommodate me, which it should. So I said, okay, well, you check your email every day. Let's get the reminders via email every day. And it just works better that way for me. So taking that, I cranked out a real basic um, Perl application to kind of handle the, the preliminary stuff. Everything was hard coded, all my reminders. But then, um, you know, I just had a crazy idea that, you know, maybe I'm not the only one who <coughs> likes to receive reminders via email and have to add additional software to their computer or carry uh, better hardware. Uh, so that's it. It's basically a send mail reminder interactive database uh, to help you keep up with things. So let's get into basically how you can access it. And we're basically right now, we're making the transition from alpha to beta. I'm not going to call it beta yet because there may be some bugs that will pop up. But at this point, uh, we need to increase user input to see if we can turn up any more bugs. Um, you can hit it by going straight to... Uh, SRID, which is SRID, Send Mail Reminder Interactive Database. The easiest so SRID. way is just to go to srid.netrage.org. That'll take you to the SRID main page. Now, if you notice, I've got it dubbed as SRID Alpha right now because, uh, again, we're working the bugs out and we're basically transitioning here into the beta phase uh, where hopefully you know we can turn up a few more minor things. Uh, with some heavy usage of the system. Uh, right now, the new user link is not active. Uh, I plan to act, get that going uh, with the page where anybody anonymous, um, anonymously can come in and uh, add their own user to it, uh, and then upon approval, we'll be able to use the system. So, <clears throat> again, uh, real basic. I wanted to keep it simple, you know, because, you know, a system like this, it was not my intention to make complicated. Uh, you put in your user, and I'll do it while I'm saying it, user, password, and time and date formats, and then, or the time and the date, and then the frequency of which you want to be reminded of the appointment. Uh, for instance, once, one time, Monday through Friday, you get the gist. Uh, however, Monday through Sunday, you notice that I actually specify the days as opposed to just putting weekly. Reason being is this way you get to actually, actually specify the day on which you want to be reminded. So let's say today is Monday, but I wanted to be reminded every Wednesday of a particular event. I can select Wednesday and it's set in the program. Uh, if I just set weeklies, I'd have to figure out some other way to decide to, or to figure out what, what day you actually want to be reminded on if it's not today. Um, your message, of course, I'm just going to put in test for a test message. I'm going to put in a bogus date and time here and update. Now you notice it first picked up that the date format is incorrect and valid date must be month, month, day, day, year, 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 year. So it kind of prompts you and will catch you here if you've entered something incorrectly. So <clears throat> basically we've got some safeguards in place but notice that, let me go back to that, um, it, it will tell you it's not correct and if it's not correct your event did not get updated in the database. So basically, you have to specify a correct time or a correct format of the time and date. Otherwise, the event will be rejected and it won't be updated. All right. If you do a successful update, you notice it will say that successful update. If you don't see that, it didn't go to the database. So this is kind of a safeguard for you to check and verify, OK, my event's in there. I will be reminded. <coughs> so. 
I keep it very simple, you know, again, like I was saying, I made it, you know, to simplify, you know, my life. Actually, in my yeah. Yahoo Mail, I don't want to show everybody all my emails, so I've opened up one message from the SRID notifier system. All right, notice subject line, and this was to help us with alpha testing. As we move on through beta, I do plan to change the subject line of the messages, but for right now, it's telling me SRID notifier record ID 112. It's basically telling me, of course, what record in the database it is. Um, powered by 3D base. All the subject lines are the same for right now. Uh, very basic, um, but of course we can always change that. Alright, now here's the subject of my message. Uh, finish debugging SRID and make a video advertising SRID and push it to data. Frequency is daily. Uh, this portion here again I added for debugging purposes, but basically I'm reminded of this every day at 8 a.m., which was the time that I set, uh, until I delete that record. And also, another thing that I remind myself now in the video, uh, we'll be adding a line to the message itself to delete that record out of the SQL database. So, um, you know, so that when you're done, you can get rid of it. You don't have to be, keep getting constantly reminded and saying, hey, you know, how do I shut this thing off? It's driving me mad. You don't have to do that once I add the link. So, anyway, they come in at 8. We got the dailies covered, we got the Monday through Friday, we got the weeklies, you know, the specific days, the monthlies are good. So, uh, basically I'm just kind of putting this together to kind of convey, you know, this is what SRID is and this is how it currently works. Now, <clears throat> limit, it's only limited by the imagination because it's always, you know, it's always a little tweak of code here, a tweak of code there to make it do this or do that. Uh, I haven't. I don't feel that we've by any means tapped the limit on what we could do with tap the limits of what we could do with the system. So, you know, I want to make SRID a community project. You know, I want people to be able to contribute. You know, I want it to stay uh, open source, which it was developed on an open source platform, which is why I tie it in with our um, r3dbase.com website, which I like to affectionately call uh, Redbase, with the e turned backwards to be the three. Um, so you can check redbase.com out, which is R3 dbase, uh, to just kind of be a part of the community, see what SRID's about, uh, you know, give us some ideas, you know, if there's anything you want us to add to the system that you think would be good, I'd love to do it. So, I mean, just let me know, shoot me an email, you can find our contact information over on the R3 dbase website, um, and there's plenty of forms to update us and let us know what you want to do, so... You can always throw a comment on the blog or just email us directly. So check us out. Um, come a long way since our first video. Uh, why we choose Linux? You know, after I made that decision several months ago, it's kind of hard to go back. Um, you know, all of our servers are running Linux. Uh, got a lot of open source solutions to uh, real major server issues. So um, it's good stuff, and we plan to keep going with it. All right. And thanks for watching.